So uh, our last speaker is Joe Pedro de Miguez uh, from Liverpool University, uh, who will speak about uh, molecular signatures to decipher aging. Hi, hi, Elia. Thank you very much. So I'll just uh, let me start sharing my uh, my slides, um, and I'll start by saying, of course, thank you to the organizers um, for the invitation and for the shame that we can't be in Brussels. Um, can you see my slides well? Okay, great. Um, so, uh, so, so I guess in the topic of, of biomarkers, most of the, the work we've done is at the level of transcriptomics. Um, so, uh, so why transcriptomics? I mean, uh, if you think about it, uh, really proteins are the actors in, the, in, the, in biology as James Watson um, put it so eloquently. So why focus on transcripts? Um, you know, we have proteomics, we have epigenomics. Well, the advantage of transcriptomics, most of all, is that it's relatively fast and cheap and can be done on a genome-wide, high-throughput fashion. Um, so proteomics, uh, it's a much more cumbersome process. Now, of course, we've heard already about epigenetics. We know that the best um, biomarkers of age um, our uh, Horvath clock and uh, methylation clocks. Um, on the other hand, the problem of them is that they don't really give biological insights into the processes that are changing. By the other hand, gene expression profiling and pro proteomics accurate biomarkers, but on the other hand, they provide biological insights. Um, and they can, for example, for testing intervention, they can indicate what is changing in a given intervention or trial or whatever it's being tested. So, I mean, I'll just give a couple of examples from, uh, from our own work. I guess this several years ago, I'll start from several years ago, uh, we did this uh, meta-analysis of aging microarray studies, um, you know, combining uh, several different studies in mammals from different tissues. But again, without going into details, that when you combine all of this um, data, that this eliminates the problems of each individual studies and improves the signal to noise ratio. So we can identify genes and pathways that individual studies miss. Uh, and so that is an approach that we've used for various uh, other processes uh, since then. So this was something we've done for aging and we have, um, I mean, you know, we, we've done for uh, other interventions. So let me show you a couple of examples. And again, I won't go into a lot of uh, methodological details, but happy to answer questions or feel free to email me later. Um, so we've done a, an approach as well related to caloric restriction, where we did, looked at this conserved gene expression profiles of caloric restriction across mammalian tissues and organisms. Um, so various different species and different tissues and um, signatures uh, of caloric restriction. And this also allows us, because it provides biological insights into processes like metabolic processes that are changing in the context of caloric restriction, then this allows us to, for example, identify uh, which genes are regulating or maybe candidates for regulating these changes, um, new biomarkers, and also new targets for drug discovery. Um, so again, I'm not saying that this is a better biomarker for aging than say epigenetics, the argument is that this can provide biological insights and targets uh, um, their station. Uh, more recently, we did this uh, meta-analysis of uh, genes associated with cell senescence. So we combine multiple um, gene expression, both microarray and RNA-seq, um, gene expression profiles from senescent cells, so we, which you see here. So here on the left, you see young fibroblasts, and these are senescent fibroblasts. And this was something I did you know, many years ago when I was a PhD student. So we combine all of these uh, gene expression profiles uh, to derive um, concerns, just like we did for caloric restriction uh, and for aging. And again, without going into details, one of the things we did then was we looked into how these genes change uh, in normal human tissues. So what you can see here is for genes that are underexpressed in cellular senescence and genes that are overexpressed in cellular senescence. Um, and as you can see, there's not a very strong 
uh, signal across all human tissues. So this is data from upregulating during cell senescence. There are more tissues than expected by chance in which these genes are also upregulated. So what I suggest is that indeed you observed signals, signatures of cell senescence in normal aging, in normal human aging tissues. Um, I would point out, however, that there are some exceptions. I think the most striking um, exception is actually the uterus. The uterus is, is, is quite striking because you see down with age in the uterus, and genes that tend to be downregulated in cell senescence actually go up in the uterus in, in, in women, in old women. So uh, the point is that you see signatures, gene expression signatures of cell senescence in human tissues, in some human tissues, in more human tissues than expected by chance, but not all human tissues. And there are even some tissues in which you see opposite para, uh, patterns like the uterus. So, I mean, I, I would argue that this um, suggests that indeed cell senescence is more prevalent in older tissues, but there are exceptions. We cannot say that cell senescence is, is present widespreadly in all uh, age human tissues. I mean, and for more details, I mean, we, we recently published this paper in genome biology that, that goes into a lot more details on, on this approach uh, and our results. Now, the other uh, aspect, of course, is uh, in addition to microarrays, is that there's a lot of data from uh, RNA-seq. As I'm sure you're aware, the cost of sequencing have dropped dramatic variety of, of, of machines. We can now sequence genomes much easier and also transcriptomes. Um, so I'll show you a couple of examples. I mean, we, we did this uh, RNA-seq of uh, aging tissues in rats, I mean, several years ago. Um, but this was uh, one, I think it was the first transcriptome sequence of normal aging in mammals. And it's a good example of the advantage of RNA-seq in terms that we detected a number of differentially expressed transcripts that did not map to any known genes, any known exons, what's called dark matter transcripts. And we even identified on, um, on genome annotations. So that's a good example of that. Um, then uh, um, a few years later, we did this um, RNA-seq of caloric restriction in the brains of rats. Um, and we showed, I mean, again, without going to a lot of details that um, you see a lot of um, neuroprotective genes like thyroidoxin that are overexpressed in caloric restriction. So they go up in the brain uh, of rats under caloric restriction. Um, we also showed that uh, caloric restriction prevents most aging related changes. So you see, compared to normal aging signatures, uh, gene expression signatures, you see that there's a amelioration of these patterns in animals exposed to caloric restriction of them. Uh, and the other thing that was thought was interesting that there were a lot of changes in chromatin related epigenetic regulators, uh, which suggests hints, or we can hypothesize that there are uh, mechanisms related to epigenetics uh, associated with caloric restriction responses. Now, more recently, the, the, the other thing we've done is, okay, so we have all of these signatures of aging, of caloric restriction. So we looked into compounds. So I'm sure you're aware there's databases of publicly available databases of gene expression signatures of chemical compounds and drugs. So we're looking into the overlap between uh, uh, gene expression signatures of uh, caloric restriction uh, and gene expression signatures of drugs. Trying to find, can we find drugs that overlap uh, with gene expression signatures of caloric restriction, which is in turn associated with longevity. Um, so and the answer is yes. I mean, um, I mean to make a long story short, um, you know we've uh, we tested five uh, compounds, five candidate compounds in worms, four of which extended lifespan, um, and they extended lifespan in normal worms, but not in worms under caloric restriction. So this shows that we can employ this network pharmacology approach to repurpose compounds for life extension. So we can identify compounds that have other clinical applications. Um, that extend lifespan in, in animal models, in this case, worms. Um, I mean, the, I think the most interesting compound, something we're still working on is olantoin. This is actually a marker of oxidative stress. Um, and we are 
are now studying its, its mechanisms and also uh, studying other related compounds that um, extend lifespan in worms as well. So we have some actually some unpublished data. So maybe from the next symposium, ideally in person in, in, in the beautiful city of Brussels, uh, I can tell you more details about it. Um, the point for now is that we can use these gene expression signatures um, to identify uh, compounds that extend lifespan and that in this specific case act as uh, caloric restriction memetics. Um, so in summary, I, I'm, I hope I persuaded that really gene expression profile, I wouldn't say it's the best biomarker per se, but it is a cost-effective way of deriving biomarkers. Okay, they're not as accurate predicting biological age as methylation, but they're more insightful from a biological perspective. That's that's the big problem of methylation. Um, and you know, the Orvath clock is that yes, it's accurate, but nobody knows what it means from a biological level. Um, and if you're trusting particular interventions, you want to have insights into that as well. If you're testing caloric restriction or metformin or any you know, compound, you, you want to know whether that's a ameliorating agent, but also what sort of biological effects it's, it's having on an animal or a patient or, or a tissue. So that's the advantage of gene expression profile is that it provides biological insights, not just biomarkers. Um, so I've told you of various microarray meta-analyses uh, that reveal signatures associated with aging. Um, and actually um, we have a, a paper currently submitted on a, a new uh, gene expression profile of, uh, of aging um, based on a meta-analysis combining microarray and RNA-seq. Um, We've derived gene expression signatures of caloric restriction as well, and gene expression signatures of, of cell senescence. Uh, I've told you also of RNA-seq, um, which we apply to aging, uh, various processes, and we apply to caloric restriction that, that associate your protection and aging. Um, and that, lastly, uh, I told you about employing network pharmacology using gene expression signatures. Um, and this can be used to reveal new longevity drugs um, by combining gene expression signatures as we used of caloric restriction or other longevity intervention uh, with gene expression signatures of drugs. Um, so with that, I, I just wanna thank, you know, again, thank you for your time and attention. And I want to, of course, thank my lab for all of the work um, that I've told you, and I guess I skipped a lot of details, but all of our preprints and reprints are available on our lab website. If you have any questions, feel free to, to contact me and also thank our funders. Um, and before we finish, I also want to point out um, this company, Centauri, that I'm also involved in. I'm, I'm well, recently, um, I'm now leading their uh, scientific efforts um, that uh, inclusively we have a project actually that called Aging Profiles in which you want to analyze multiple omics uh, um, understand about the process of aging and how to better intervene on it. Uh, and so I would suggest you check out uh, the website of Centauri if, and if anyone is looking for, for a job in, in computational systems biology, um, approaches in the, to contact us. And again, thank you very much for your time and attention. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I don't see any questions in the chat. So I guess uh, this, uh, otherwise, uh, somebody wants to shout out the question? No? Okay. Uh, uh, then I guess it's a conclusion of our session. It's been an intensive, highly enriching uh, session. Thank you very much, all the participants, all the organizers. I uh, hope uh, the next session will be in five minutes. It's been a two hour session. So uh, in about five, seven minutes, uh, uh, we reconvene to discuss more, uh, uh, more general and more social aspects um, of, of, of uh, testing and of uh, biomarkers development. So uh, thanks again and uh, see you. Thank you.